Okay, so we start. Okay, Boker Tov, everybody. Um, we're going through Orat HaMilchama. We're now in chapter uh, number five, and uh, I think really interesting stuff in terms of what we're seeing now in the world and cultures and much like a clash of cultures and especially now like seeing um i think in the in the political climate when you're seeing these absolute uh um these absolute evil evil disgusting uh excuses for human beings coming and uh presenting us with these offensive and destructive um terms of a ceasefire um it seems like Ralph cook uh, predicted all the evil uh, unfortunately history keeps on repeating itself um and nothing interesting also just related to mishpatim we'll see we'll see how it all comes out in the wash okay so we chapter number five if we look at just the end of chapter four where we got up to it was talking about uh the, the relationship between israel and the nations of the world um and it says here that if it wasn't all the nations of the world would be connected with uh with israel um and then all realize israel's prominence and uh that that, they, that we all come from we all stem from the same place we all grow from the same uh from from the same sort of seed but the seed of am israel is is the one that is blessed and therefore they would uh, uh that you know they would hold on to us in order to understand that the, that the light of god comes through us um sorry what, what just just as we we uh Followed the whole series. Which which sefer are we are we reading from? This is this is a rota Oh, okay. So so I, I did that in the first few days of the war. We got um, we got to like I think chapter three, and then we did chapter four a couple of weeks ago, um, and now we're just working our way through. Um, we did chapter five last week. So yes, Rav Cook's or rot is right. It's broken up into all different pieces. This is the one I think in. Uh, you would have seen it in the vernacular bite back in the day. It was like translated, uh, I think called War and Peace or something. To make it sound like Tolstoy. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah. You could be well, really interested in those sorts of things back in the day. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have books in those days. What did you say? Yeah. The heading was taken already. The, the papyrus had already faded. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, I think I think it's called I think it's called on War and Peace, but it sounds too much like Tolstoy. But let's uh, War and Peace cook. Yeah, it's called War and Peace. Uh, so that's the English translation of it, which I don't have, but I just remember seeing it so many times in the in the in the vernacular bite. Um, an Orin publication. You can't say I'm you know that I don't promote other publishers. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So we're back here. Uh, okay. So, so this is what we saw in chapter four over here. He talks about this, like the relationship between the nations of the world and Israel, um, and that that the nations of the world need to understand. If it wasn't for Chet they would they would there wouldn't be like such separation in terms of the relationship between God and Israel, God and the, and the nations of the world. Um, the nation of the world would have like a a, a reverence um that that shame hashem is called on them as well that that hashem's name can be manifest through them as well and that that um um that israel is the ultimate you know blessed seed of uh, of god um and, uh, and therefore they would come to you know they would come to us in peace and uh, everything would work out nicely chapter five is is interesting it says i'll uh, we'll make it bigger so this is like Rav Cook's sophisticated Hebrew where you have to go right down to the root the, the roots of his words. So I think he says if he had the uh also did a little bit of Google translating before, but he says the, the moral oppression, right? So Kvisha we know it's like pressed down. So so the moral oppression shall pia tarbuta chilon. This is chilonit. That according to the secular cultures, she shall tahar So these these uh, secular nations have been stewing in their own um, um, in their own cultures and their own beliefs for thousands of years. Um, and and those cultures that they sort of invested in and, and that way of life and, and those ideologies have 
obviously had an effect on them <clears throat> and caused um and oppressed their heart right so it's like causing oppression on their heart their hearts obviously being like what's the core source of their liveliness of their life of their uh, life force and of their values um and their beliefs and it's from that place of having a, a heart that's um, unhealthy and sort of like stewing and marinating in these terrible cultures and ideologies so the outcome of it is that they have lots of terrible traits lots of evil characteristics um and there's like malady sicknesses and uh, what was this uh, translation yeah and like a uh, bad and, and austeri austerities so the things that they value and and, uh, and everything just becomes sick and the whole system becomes ill uh, so it, it like accumulates in the depths of their souls right so they they immerse themselves in these terrible in, in these terrible ideologies the the character traits um that that are then manifest um cause like a, a moral sickness in the way that they behave um and then that becomes like a like a sort of like building block on on their on on the depths of their souls right so it's like it's just this process of um how would you say like a you know just like a cycle of deterioration and degradation in terms of their own uh, their own souls and their own um uh, values and then what happens is they go out from these like the quarries um the 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 place that they've been formed and they step out into these many many wars uh, many bloody wars wars that are great that are bloody and that are ugly um that fit very much um in line and are suitable to their unrefined uh the unrefined uh, nature so the chapter before talks about that in like the purest form <laughs> the nation should be able to be who they want to be um manifest hashem's name um you know they can also be vehicles for hashem's name in the world and then acknowledge us as being the ultimate manifestation of Hashem's name in the in, in the world, Bani Bukhari Yisrael, are we coming out of Egypt in in uh, um, in these parashiot? Um, so we come out, and Hashem calls us Bani Bukhari Yisrael. We are His firstborn son. All the nations are Hashem's children, but we are His firstborn son. So the first aspect of here is that they would be able to realize what their role is, and then not just coexist with us but really lord us and follow us because we're the ultimate manifestation of Hashem in the world that's that's what we saw in chapter four in chapter five now he's saying that's not the situation right so because that's not the situation they immerse themselves in these sick and uh, twisted and immoral and corrupt ideologies and then that causes like a you know it's like a uh, what's it called like a I guess like a national um cognitive dissonance and they get further and further away from this essence that they could be that could be manifest and it becomes rooted in their hearts rooted in their souls um and then their actions become not just like within their own nations are they sick and immoral but they then go out and they go into war right so what is war war is saying that i believe so much in my values as a person or as a as a nation that i'm going to go and uh infiltrate another nation one because either maybe it could be territorial so i just want to spread my um i want to spread my beliefs in in the you know around me and spread it out or even worse which we see you know the culmination of both these things in in the war that we're facing it's like the fact that we exist is an affront to their ideology so they go out to war against us just because of what we stand for um so you can see that from like the the palestinian territorial claim sandy i know it's not a term that we throw out easily here um um to extending to like iran to iran which has no territorial you know gain um but has an idea uh, you know finds us ideologically affronting um to put it nicely and therefore they go out and they cause war right so that's what a war is right it's a clash of it's a clash of ideologies that you then take so that you then have manifest in a physical way through wanting to obliterate uh you know the other nation um so you know from our perspective it's obviously it's an ex we're against an existential threat so we have to fight um and we have to go to war in order to continue to exist but we don't have any aspirations of conquering the world through violence because of our ideology 
we got we the exact opposite um so this is really interesting right so if you carry on to chapter six you'll see how it all sort of like develops so he says so all nations develop and uh, they can manifest themselves according to their natural movements so what does what does a, a war do it uh, entrenches um, and gives more depth to the specific values of that nation right so we can we can, we've seen it for ourselves um well, the war has brought out our core which is good which is caring which is unifying which is beautiful right which is like about sacrifice and goodness and uh and and value and peace um that's what i fear so much is when when there's not a war we start fighting around stupid things and and we throw ourselves off course the scare the, the most frightening thing for me is for all of us is how do we all hold on to this unity um because i think it's a unity that comes from an existential threat so what are the things that we actually need to change fundamentally so we can hold on to it even in times uh in times of peace and, and i don't think it's a simple answer in, in any means um and uh, i think there's tremendous work to be done i've seen some people give some answers and i found them very underwhelming you know one was like uh, everybody's unified because we we're all in the army together it didn't matter what your culture was and didn't matter what your background was it didn't matter what your class was you know we can we, we all saw that we were the same i think it's beautiful and i think it gives like you know tremendous depth to the unity that's achieved in the army in a war but i don't think it lasts long term when when all the regular forces of life come to play so um i think that's our work that is our spiritual work i even said it to um different like projects that we're considering um, at work and i said that's the uh i think that's that's like where that's the next spiritual jump for the for the jewish people has to be how do we create um see film katanim about unity right so you know like in the shulchan Aruch, you have you have um let's say you want to know what the hilchot of uh not mixing milk and meat so you've got all the sea film you've got each um each line i blanked out for each clause but then in each clause you've even got see film katanim you've got like the um you've got like the sub the sub clauses right the small clauses then you've got the commentary on the see film katanim you know like the do we have that in terms of unity like do we what's hilchot achdut right? i feel like there needs to be hilchot achdut that uh that gets that gets formulated from the smaller smallest interactions um you know to not mix milk and meat there's like a whole world of fences around it um you know the fact that we that we wait that we wait time is already like a gazera on a gazera um uh the fact that uh, we have separations in our kitchens right the fact that we always thinking about it all the time is this value of not mixing m milk and meat on a Torah level but there's so many things that that bring us towards that in terms of our consciousness and our actions what what are the what are we doing in terms of unity like to do that what are, what, are, what are the xerot that we put in our lives to make sure that we you know that we're not over on the right of achtut um, and what are the proactive laws that we should be putting in place to do that uh, it's what like i wrote about it a few weeks ago right around like greeting random strangers in the street i like think we have to be machmir on that it should be a, an absolute mitzvah um people still when i greet them think that they owe me money or something they get worried um so but those are little things there needs to be things that are far more sophisticated but there needs to be lots more things that are also just as basic so that's my call out to the universe i hope i hope hashem's listening and he helps us work out how do we write the how do we write the shulchan aruch on, on unity because i think that's what we need um but be that as a may that's a value that comes up for us as a nation in war is unity which is beautiful um so to the point that that the nation's um form and their substance um comes out uh, is manifest in absolute completion in all of its smallest details right pirte im care sifim ktanim right the, the depth of details um okay so now that's that's the concept in war people's absolute right their colors really show that's the truth israel is the looking glass of all the world because man yesh am baolam and all the time that there's a nation in the world that still hasn't been able to manifest itself in all of its um 
um taxi sab it's like it's like jewelry um i guess like all of it's like uh, the translation you have got is tricks yes there's a there's a darkness there's a relative darkness of this nation um in contrast to the absorbed light of knesset israel right so you hold this nation thinks that they're a good nation or that they're like somewhat moral you hold up israel to them right israel i'm israel um the people of israel and when you hold up that light you see the the black patches and the dark patches of them they haven't come out so so what 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 then happens i can recall man so what happens is there's this like cook talks about this like cosmic force that happens that when there's a um, a dissonance between the light of israel and the darkness of another nation in order to close that gap there's like a force right there's like a there's like a and that force often is war right that's the four that the, the force that then brings that light to uh um, to come in or forces that nation into a war so that they have to um um you know they would shake up their essence in a sense we merely you let quite hash lamat when it's israel we him it's a father of lotion machine actually about your field america and then out of that also comes a completion of and a, a further perfection of of uh knesset israel um which is always on the trajectory of waiting for the heels of mashiach that they should come and they should appear very soon in our days and that's really hard to understand that because we're the the nation that's that the only thing i can agree with this morning is what you said what that's the only thing i can agree with it's very hard to understand but go for it <laughs> yeah really i mean the the light would come from wars because we are on such a higher level or or whatever <laughs> which is how i understand it like we're looked at upon as if we are yeah yeah i i, I can't say that i understand it completely but, but what i think i think like the movement of what he's saying is there's when there's a dissonance between light and darkness the light is like searching to fill the darkness and the darkness itself is looking to shed it you know shed its darkness to become more light and that's like the process that happens in a war because wars are shaking shaking nations up at the core so if you look at it just look what we're going through now yes there's lots of lies and falsehood in the world and that but there's also a tremendous tremendous amount of morality that's come out in the nations of the world that we haven't seen before like the 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 deep 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 darkness that the world experienced on october the 7th uh, you know it, it was able to then contrast and say okay this is a war of light and dark before there were all these shades of gray and you know are the are, are these people in gaza being oppressed do they want peace do they not want peace do they pick up the balloons that the people in you know barry are throwing over the fence and take them and have peace parties with them you know do they take nativa shalom on the edge of nativa sarah and look at the dove that we painted and you know become inspired and and then go to school and talk about peace there were a lot of people in our nation thought that that was happening and uh and then this deep darkness came um where this nation said we're going to express our essence and our essence is dark and disgusting and vile and and you look at the level of depth right like it talks about in care you see like the details of the depth of of who they are as a nation how they've marinated themselves in such in such destructive forces and uh and they've invested in it like the the, the tunnels like are mad they're just absolutely mad they've invested in absolute evil so how, how could that come to light right how could that absolute evil come to light it comes to light when they show themselves in a war right and then like they have to they have to flex their muscles and we see how dark, deep and dark and disgusting their their muscles are um and then that gives an opportunity for the light just to be seen for what the light is um i think that's what we felt i wrote about that in in parashat Barashat, which turned out to be like the there was like this real contrast between dark and light and like oh there's real dark and there's real light in the world um and uh you know, if you look at like what happened with this whole unra thing that look you know everybody in the world will tell you UNRWA is great and god there's UNRWA in in gaza at least there's you know the united nations is there that that uh that darkness um has been shed right and now people can see it for what it is and now we can attack the darkness because the darkness is pretending to be light 
So I think that's what's happening. I, I don't think Rav Cook is talking about who forces the war practically. I think he's talking cosmically around what are the forces that start, you know, that that, that are operating on like a level that's beyond our understanding, that um, you know, that cause of clash. So that's uh, is it, is that any more helpful or is it just more confusing? No, it was it was very helpful. Just uh, unfortunately, only we see it. Like the other nations don't even believe that what they see. I, I think beyond all the crazy TikToks and the things and the Instagram and Facebook rubbish, you see what these nations are doing. You know, um, yeah, I mean, this are, yeah, yeah. Uh, this Argentinian president. I don't know much about him. He seems a bit mad, but uh, <laughs> but his support is awesome, right? Like unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, and uh, you look at all these different European countries that have uh, defunded UNRWA in a, in a, in a, in, you know, very quickly um, and are standing by Israel. The, the challenge is that all these nations, and, and ourselves included, have still got lots of black spots that need to be cleaned out in the wash. And, um, you know, so you see, I don't know, saw these comments this morning from like Blinken saying, Israel can't use October 7th, you know, for absolutely everything and anything you know, to, to to justify, you know, whatever. Like, in terms of what they're saying and how they're phrasing it and how Biden is, you know, uh, trying to trying to dance a silly dance, um, that's a black spot. Uh, in terms of our leadership and how we deal with things, there's certainly black spots. But in terms of Knesset Israel, like, like, I get a lot of strength from, and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, lot more lately, um, is uh, I'll share the podcast, you know, there. One of the guys I work closest with, his, his name is Avishai Magenta. He's an amazing, amazing guy. Um, he's a rav. He learns in Gush. He's the <coughs> he's the editor in chief of Corrin. So like, <coughs> there's Magid as an imprint, and Magid is um, um, you know Magid does like the thought leadership, and then there's Corrin does all the core texts. So he's in charge of that. He's a mafaked machlaka, so like the head of a whole division in southern Efrat. He's been there from October 7th and he's still, he's got, I think, got five kids. He's just an amazing guy, but he's still there. I messaged him yesterday. He said maybe they, maybe he'll be out April, May, doesn't know. Yeah. That's my mash, uh, my mash hard. But I'll send you the podcast and, and from my discussions with him, like privately, he talks about... Um, um, the uh, the uh, um, so what he spoke about is, is he said, you know, the army got lots of issues, right? There's like we saw, there's lots of supply issues, there's lots of challenges, there's lots of things, and you know, are they making the right decisions and everything? Who knows, right? It's like it's a bureaucratic organization, like any like any other. They're definitely trying their best. And they're doing amazing things. He says, but but he what he says is he thanks the state of Israel for giving us a mechanism. For the people of Israel to stand up and defend themselves, and to and to have a uniform that they can wear to say we defending the Jewish people, we defending the people of Israel, and and uh, it's like such an important paradigm shift. <clears throat> it's not about this state entity, you know, of Tzahal and Tzavai and how we deal with that and and any issues, you know, in, inside and out. It's just saying, wow, what a schut that we have to live in a time when we can put on uniforms. As the Jewish people, and we can have weapons, and the the a state will give us these weapons, and will give us the ability to defend ourselves and not and not be uh, <clears throat> not be taken out. So, when you read these pieces in our cook, and he talks about Knesset Israel, and Knesset Israel is strong and pure and beautiful and powerful. But the United Israel has got its uh, it's, it's a country like other countries. It's got all its and um, and, and and we see that also with the. Um, um with the uh the koach of 